cycle into a hedge and hit your head. That's why I'm wearing this snazzy helmet. Or you could fall off and get a nasty graze on your knee. That's why I'm wearing these snazzy leggings. And finally, of course, you need to make sure your bike is properly maintained. You wouldn't want to squeeze your brakes and... Uh-oh! My brakes! Oh, my brakes! Oh. Oh. Well, thanks to my helmet, I don't have a head injury. Me neither, and thanks to these leggings, I haven't got any grazes. But on the downside, I think I've broken my arm. Sounds like an injury alert. So, what should you do with a broken arm? Should you A, run around the park screaming, ah, my arm's broken? B, support it to stop it moving using your hand, some clothing or cushions? Or C, tell your teacher you won't be doing homework ever again? You guessed it, the answer is B. Here's how it's done. So, Chris, put your arm against your body gently as you can. It really hurts if I move it. And then what we can do is use Chris's jumper to support the arm itself. So if I go very gently, try not to move oh. the arm. Now remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency. Never do this on your own unless it is an emergency. Always try and find an adult. How's that? And can you now relax your arm? Yeah, that feels much better. Yeah. More comfortable, isn't it? So once he's feeling better, we can get him to hospital. He's going to be more comfortable when he's moving. We can get him x-rayed and see what's going on. So now it's this lot's turn to have a go. Ow! Ow! That's really good. So try and be very gentle with that arm. How's that feeling? Can you relax that arm now? Feels yeah. pretty good? Yeah, it feels a little bit. So obviously, for most of the time when you've got a broken arm, you don't need to call an ambulance. You can get in a car and go to any of yourself. So, if you think you might have broken your arm, support it to stop it moving using your hand or clothing or cushions and tell an adult or call 999. Are you sure it's broken, Chris? Better safe than sorry, Zahn. And nothing beats a good party. But some people, when they're getting ready, can get a bit overexcited. People like Zant. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting in the mood, but if you're not careful, you might expose yourself to danger. <laughs> you could accidentally slip in the bathroom, burn yourself with straighteners, or even strain your voice practicing karaoke. Zand, Zand, oh, oh, oh. you need to save your energy. You're not going to have any left for the party. Right, a few final checks for me. Collar straight, hair smart, and a final squirt of aftershave. Ah! Ah! Right into his own eye. Looks like an injury alert! So, what should you do if you accidentally get something nasty in your eye? A. Wrap your whole head in bandages and pretend you're an Egyptian mummy. B. Order another eye online from Eyes R Us. Or C. Wash your eye out with lukewarm water. What do you think, Hanny? I think C because, say, if you've got perfume in it, you'll just wash it out. Hanny's got it. The answer is C. Wash your eye out with lukewarm water. And here's how. Right, let's get you sat down. Then we're going to get clean water and just wash his eye out with it. So what I'm going to do is going to put my thumb above his eye, my finger below, and then I can hold his eye gently open. And that means that the water actually gets in and washes the stuff out of his eye. We're going to start pouring the water into the corner of his eye beside his nose. Oh, that's good. Now remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency. Never do this on your own unless it is an emergency. And always try and find an adult. Just keep blinking. All fixed. So do any of you want to try this yourselves? Yes! Ow, oh, I have something on my eye. Oh, my eye really stinks. Oh. OK, so we, what are we going to do, guys? Come up, we'll sit you down here. Sit down, cos you can't see. Nice one, Boo. Just confidently hold her eye open with your thumb and finger yes. there. That's really good. You're just pouring it at the corner of her eye right there, so it all washes sideways. That's good. It's important to have a good aim. Did you get it in the eye? I think that went on the eyelid. 
pull the water right on the eyeball. Oh, good job. That was better. So remember, sit the patient down, gently hold open the eye, and pour the water right onto the eyeball. And always try and find an adult. How's your eye feeling, Chris? Much better. Thank you, Zahn. Right, let's get ready to party. The average person's skin, when stretched out, can cover two square metres. So you'd better look after that skin of yours. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love making things. But even in the safety of the classroom, there's still a lot of potential danger. <laughs> For example, you could cut yourself on a piece of paper. I don't think so, Chris. Or you could end up covering yourself in glue. Doesn't seem very likely. Anyway, I'm finished. So am I. Meow. Or, finally, I guess you could make something so bad that your twin brother ends up laughing at you. Ah! I'm going to tell the teacher. Ah! Oh, my head. Uh-oh, looks like an injury alert. So, what should you do if you have a bleeding gash on your head? A. Wrap a hundred metres of toilet roll around your head. B. Immediately do a zombie impression. Or C. Apply pressure to stop the bleeding and then fetch an adult. Issa, what's the answer? C. Why? Because you need to put pressure so it stops bleeding. Yes, Issa is absolutely right. Now, check this out. So, I'm just going to... What is going on up on top of that building? That's really weird. So, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to get a cloth. Now, if you don't have a tea towel, get one of your shirts, you can tear off a bit of shirt, and press hard on the area that's bleeding. And then it stops bleeding, and you get an adult. Ah! I'm trying to press hard with just my thumb on the one spot where he's bleeding. OK, so, do you guys want to have a go? Yes! <laughs> Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. Quick, quick, quick! <laughs> pressure. That was very quick acting, Ragda. That was great. I'd get my thumb in the tea towel and I'd press quite hard, like, like that. Do you think it's likely that she might be feeling a bit faint? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what should I we do if she's feeling a bit faint? Sit her down. Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Ow, ow, it hurts, ow. What are we going to do now? <laughs> Call an ambulance. No, ask for help. Yeah, I think ask for help, ask for an adult. So that's it. If you have a bleeding gash on your head, use a piece of cloth or your shirt to apply pressure to stop the bleeding. Sit the patient down if they're feeling faint and tell an adult. Ouch. Did you know you carry around five litres of blood in your body all the time? It's one of the things that helps keep your organs warm. Wow! And talking of keeping warm... The British weather, it's so hard to predict. At the moment, the sun is shining and it's hot, hot, hot. And I always like to be the first to break out the shorts and sun cream. Um, you've missed a bit. But you never know how long the sunshine is going to last. At any moment, the sun could go in. I don't think so, Chris. It's actually quite a nice day. And once the sun's gone in, it could start getting chilly. And that could be dangerous. At any moment, it could bucket down with rain. Well, actually, Chris, I did bring an umbrella for that very eventuality. <laughs> and in this country, even on a day like today, it could hail. Hail? <laughs> Which is why you should always pack an extra layer of dry clothes, isn't it, Zand? Zand? Uh-oh, Zand's gone pale and unresponsive. This looks like hypothermia. So, what should you do if someone is really cold and you think they may have hypothermia? A. Use them as a giant ice cube in your drink. B. Call 999, warm the person by wrapping them in a blanket and give them warm drinks and chocolate. Or C. Enter them into a talent show as a novelty shivering act. What do this lot think? B. Wrap them in a blanket and call 999. Emily's absolutely right. Have a look at this. Let's sit you down. 
Now, how cold are you? I'm freezing. Are your lips blue? Yeah, blue lips. Are his lips blue? Yeah. yeah. Yes, his lips are blue. Let's get you a blanket. Also, we can give him a hot drink and chocolate bar. Sometimes the person may even be confused. So, do you know who you are? I'm Dr Chris. Oh, dear. Looks like he's a bit confused and he's not going to be able to warm himself up, even with a blanket or with the tea. I think we need more help. Ring, ring. Ring, uh, ring. Emergency services, what's the problem? I thought you were hypothermic. I'm just doing the emergency services bit. Oh, I see. OK, OK. Uh, it's Dr Chris here. I've got an emergency. I want the ambulance, please. Oh, right. Where are, whereabouts are you? I'm at the Operation Out School. We'll get an ambulance to you straight away. Thank you. So now we'll just look after you, and if we can, we'll take off his wet clothes and move him indoors. Who's up for treating someone with hypothermia? <laughs> They're keen. Now, remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. OK, so what else do you need to do now? Um, get us some, some hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. And Choc some chocolate. And chocolate bar, lovely. Do you know where you are? Library. In the library. Uh, We're not in the library, yeah, are we? Library. What do we want to do? Call 999. Yeah, I think you better do that. So, if you think someone has hypothermia, you should warm the person by wrapping a blanket or towel around them and give them warm drinks and high-energy foods such as chocolate. Son, what are you doing? We've finished. You don't have to keep stuffing your face with chocolate. You haven't got hypothermia anymore. Oh, right, OK. Ooh, look at that dog over there. A dog? I want to see this. Nothing beats a spot of football in the park. Fresh air, aerobic exercise, and of course, the chance to show off those silky football skills, like the step over. Yo. Or the cry off turn. <laughs> or the rainbow flick. But football can also be dangerous. <laughs> you could turn sharply and twist an ankle. I don't think so, Chris. Well, well, you could injure yourself if someone tackled you. Very unlikely in my case. You could break your fifth metatarsal kicking the ball too hard. My metatarsals are as hard as toughened steel. All right, well, look, just be careful when we're playing. Now, Zandi, on me head, son! <laughs> that manoeuvre's known as the Chris Clonk, but it's also an injury alert. Wow, Chris is very good at pretending to be knocked out, isn't he? So, what should you do if you think someone is unconscious and breathing? A. Tip their head back, check they are breathing and roll them onto their side. B. Shout, wakey, wakey, really loudly. Or C. Lie down next to them and have a sleep, enjoying the peace and quiet. The answer is A. Tip their head back, check their breathing and roll them onto their side. First thing we want to do is check if he's breathing. We can tilt his head back a little bit so his airway's open, and then have a listen. I can feel his breath on my ear, and I can see his chest moving, so we definitely know he's breathing. So now we need to roll him onto his side, so we get his leg up here, get his arm over here, and then we can pull him this way. And then we can use this hand to support his head. And now if he's sick, it goes on the ground. His tongue is going to fall forward so it won't stop him breathing and we can go and get help because he's nice and safe. Who wants to have a go? Me! Remember, never do this on your own unless it is an emergency. It's always best to find an adult. Check if she's breathing. Well done, girls. Yeah, he's breathing. Took her your way. Next. Get them into the recovery position. And then what's the final thing we've got to do? Check if she's Check breathing. Him. That's good. So you have a good old listen, good old look, yeah. and she's still breathing. So, if someone has been knocked unconscious and they're breathing, tip their head back, roll them onto one side, and find an adult. Hey, do you want to see my new football trick? It's called the Zahn Loop Lift and Dive. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Uh, no! Uh,